I've really learned to love seeds. I heard this beautiful saying from the indigenous people from North America and their idea of seeds is that you should never speak bad language in front of seeds, that you should respect seeds and love seeds. And I really took that on board and I sort of seen that they're alive, seeds are alive. They, they're about to bring all this new life, it's little bits of magic. I sit in my glass house and plant things with you know, music playing, um, I like to share that with the seeds. I think that's a, hopefully they're enjoying it too. Welcome to Greenlaw. We're sitting on Gundangara country here. My name is Kirstine Mackay and my family and I moved here just under 10 years ago. So before we moved to the Highlands, we lived in Manly, right near the ocean, which was wonderful. We had two little boys at that point. Um, but we really wanted to move away from that lifestyle and more into a space where we were more connected with our food, more connected with nature and have an ability to show our children um, how we can live lightly on the planet and hopefully inspire other people to do the same thing. So Greenlaw is situated just outside of Barrel in Burradu, short walk to town. It's only on 1.3 acres. We felt it was a perfect marriage between having enough land to grow food and be as self-sufficient as possible and still being close enough to be connected to town where we can ride bikes to school and walk to town. So that's what our mantra is as a family, how we can live lightly and whether that be how we manage our power usage or our transport, where we buy our clothes. We grow a lot of our own food and we grow a lot of our own produce. You know, it might be things that we can make drinks out of or honey or eggs or, you know, anything that I think, it's almost like a challenge. I'd love to see if, if I can grow something and anything I look at that, oh, I've bought that. I wonder if I can see how us as a family can produce that. It's amazing what you can actually do in a really small space. I grow a lot of berries because I eat berries almost every day. So we've got blackberries, strawberries, raspberries, boysenberries, all sorts of berries. We have an apple orchard, pear orchard, plums, apricots. We've even got an avocado tree. It's very young, but we're hopeful. And then of course there's the veggies. So your tomatoes and zucchinis and capsicums and cucumbers and herbs. So most of the herbs, I think if you could name a herb, I think I grow it. I sometimes go to the supermarket and you know, buying grains and things like that, which and, and dairy that we, we can't um, produce off our property. I think, oh my goodness, people must think we're so unhealthy. <laughs> there's not a, a green thing in my trolley, except maybe mangoes and bananas, which our climate just doesn't sustain. But if only they you. We just, thankfully, I haven't had to buy garlic or herbs or so many things for many, many years, which is great. And I also really like doing things, for example, looking around at established trees that we have in our garden um, that were here long before we came and working about, okay, these are ornamental trees, but learning a bit about them. And some of them have really interesting medicinal or um, nutrient um, value in them. For example, we have many magnolia trees here and magnolia flowers are edible flowers. They actually have a bit of a ginger taste to them. We had a lot of flowers this year, so I pickled a whole lot. I also grow a lot of uh, roses and really enjoy drying those for teas um, or putting them in face scrubs. We love it because we can walk into our garden and not only is it exciting to have your own basket and collecting different things for, for for your dinner that night, but to know that there's not that impact where it's been grown and then transported and then sold. Mm. And all of that has embodied energy. So it's nice to know that our food is full of nutrients, um, but it's also not causing any emissions. A couple of years ago, I started planting more and more native edibles in our garden. We have a, many wattles on our property. Seasonally they all drop seeds and I collect them and I turn them into cakes and all sorts of things. I also love growing things like lemon myrtle and I just love the taste of lemon myrtle, it's just delicious. And I have, 
you know, First Nations friends and they have just such a, an incredible knowledge and a love for country. And I just wanted to know more about the indigenous plants of our country and if I can be a part of growing and sharing the knowledge about indigenous plants to Australia, um, I want to be a part of that. So we've got about 70 different varieties of native plants, mainly herbs at this point in time. It's in its infancy, but I'd, I'd love to learn more. And um, yeah, there's so much we can learn about indigenous plants and we should be fostering a love for that. So we also have a thing about being um, cyclical, if you like, or having a, the cycle of life and ensuring there's no waste. For us, it's really about looking at wasted food or things like that. It's not a waste, it's a resource. Spending time in the garden for me is a pleasure. It's what I do when I want to switch off and uh, have some me time. And also I think it's, it's been scientifically proven that having your hands in the soil and connecting to that is actually really, really beneficial for your health. I sadly don't get as much time as I'd like in the garden, but I dedicate probably one day a week Sometimes when we've got planting season or peak harvesting season, that might be longer. But then you've also got to factor in time for um, processing all the produce. There is a lot of time at the back end, but it's stuff, I, that homesteading thing is I, what I love. I love the fact that we've got all these, a larder full of food that can sustain us. So it's actually quite rewarding time spent. I believe that if you set up a space that you love to be in, make your space beautiful and then you want to be in it, and the more you're in a space, the better your plants will grow because you're paying attention to them. You're understanding their needs and think, oh, that one needs a little bit of compost or that might need a bit of water or whatever it is. The more you're there to look after them, the better they'll grow and the more they'll produce for you. I am a strong believer in uh, companion planting, in looking after our soil health. Landscape regeneration is the way we need to be looking after our planet and producing food, whether it is on a huge scale or on a really small urban scale. That all comes down to soil health, putting all the greens that come out back in. And it's also working with companion plants and planting um, a real biodiversity. So if you walk around my garden, it's a riot of colour and plants hiding in different places. And I, I'll hide lettuce in one spot of the garden, hide it in another so that if that, that lettuce gets attacked, this little patch won't. Um, but it's also choosing plants that work really well together. I'm often looking at plants and, and putting them together and trying to work out what it is that um, will help them grow and and it might be a chemical reason and other things that might be more it's it's a taking away pests for example I'll often leave a brassica like broccoli or a cauliflower to go to seed right next to my garlic crop um, not only will I get seeds off the brassica but it seems to attract all of the aphids and they don't go to my garlic so I have lovely clean garlic One of the really important things for us in moving to the Highlands was having the ability for our children to be more connected with nature. And I think that's so important for our children because the more we love something, we more, the more we want to protect it. And along the way, they've learnt where their food comes from and they've built their own cubbies and tree houses and things like that. Um, but I think for, for anyone, whether you're in the city or not, you can do that. But we just wanted to make sure it was a daily occurrence that this we're part of Mother Nature, we're part of the earth and, and our, our, our role to protect it is so important. Part of being, living lightly on the planet for our family was inspiring others to also live lightly. And we've done that through creating a small business called Life at Greenlaw as well as Barrel Bees. So you can find Life at Greenlaw on Facebook or Instagram at Life at Greenlaw and we'd love to share our journey, inspire others to also live lightly. After growing food for quite a few years, I started to realise um, that this is what I love to do and, and it's really uh, important. Ever since then, I just started to really just focus on that. That's all I wanted to do. My name is Justin Hartley and I started Duckfoot Farm in July 2020. I don't have millions of dollars to afford land and infrastructure and machinery, so fortunately I've met some people who are generous and open to sharing their land and 
giving me the opportunity to, to grow food for the local community. So Duckfoot Farm started in Mossvale uh, with Ian and Sandra. They knew that I was after some land to grow veggies on and they didn't hesitate. I didn't even have to ask them. They just donated the land. They asked me which block of land I want on this property. They're pretty keen environmentalists and they've had this land for a long time and wanted to see it being used. So they gave me the opportunity here. I'm using just under half an acre. I sort of went out on a limb, but it made sense. So I took the chance and it took about eight months and I didn't have any money. I had about $10,000 in the bank account. And I spent it all on compost uh, and I had a wheelbarrow. And that's pretty much it. Um, scavenged the cardboard from Harvey Norman in their bins, become quite well known around there. Had some help from some volunteers, they saw what I was doing and people jumped on board pretty quickly and helped out. We built this beautiful little farm using regenerative methods so I don't, I don't cultivate because you cultivate the soil, you're tilling it and you're, you're pulverising it, turning it into a powder and what you're doing is destroying um, the soil structure, all the micro and macro organisms that form the structure, they form relationships with each other, they transport nutrients, they also um, create nutri nutrients, they make them available, they extract nutrients from the atmosphere. And the whole web of life going on here that is vital for, for soil health and for plant health. The other problem with cultivation is that it causes erosion. So or we've already lost a third of our topsoil on the planet due to modern agricultural practices and then we're also spraying chemicals all over the place so it's about about building the soil biology i add compost to the soil i build up i never expose the native soil so it's never exposed it's always mulched with compost obviously it's building the soil biology but it's also in drought it will hold more moisture so you need less water so it's better water retention. It's proven to be beneficial in floods as well. So Mossvale Farm, we've got a clay-based soil here. So this was the worst of the lot. I did lose some crops here, but overall the farm's still intact. You know, there's no erosion. So we've, all, we've got our native soil still here. And what I do when I pull the plants out, I don't actually just pull the whole plant out with the roots. I cut the base of the plant um, at the root zone. What that is doing is leaving all the, all the root matter there because that's, that's organic matter. It's um, irrigation filtration system, so the water runs down those roots and gets water down into the subsoil. It's food for the, for the biology, it's habitat for the worms. And what happens with photosynthesis, it absorbs carbon, puts it down in the soil. By leaving those roots in there, it also stabilizes the soil. So when we do get floods, um, that minimizes the chance of erosion. So there's, there's just so many benefits to, to this no-till um, farming method. At the beginning, I didn't really know what I was doing. I had, I had the idea in mind, thanks to Charles Dowding, who's a UK market gardener. I really loved his methods. I was really taking on a, a risk. I wanted to scale it up, but also I'd, I'd never practiced this method before. It's been a bit of a roller coaster. Sometimes I felt like it's not quite working out, you know, it gets flooded and, you know, I'm tired all the time. I've still got to, you know, my weekend, I've got to get up and find some motivation to keep going. But then once I started to get an income and some opportunities come on other lands and I borrowed some money, uh, that's when we started to get a, a bobcat instead of a wheelbarrow. Um, so yeah, we started to, to change the, the methods of building the farms. So the next plot um, was um, Peter and Roberta in Exeter. They bought 20 acres and have never owned land before. It was previously a market garden, so it had some infrastructure there. Already had a wash bay, a cool room, a propagation area, and it also had the main irrigation lines. Their incentive is obviously I get, I look after an acre of their land, but they also want me to donate some of the produce to a charity. And then the third property is in Penrose. Uh, again, it's another another situation, uh, another reason why landowners would want this on their property. They're, they're building a wellness retreat. So there's off-grid cabins and villas. And so they see Duckfoot Farm again as looking after part of their land. So they've given me three acres to use. And it's an attraction. As it is right now, I've got more than enough land to keep me busy for the rest of my life. <laughs> You know, I've already started internships. Sam Hansen come through, taught him everything I could in, in three months. It's not very long, but um, yeah, and then we found him some land. My name is Sam Hansen. I'm the owner operator of Maple Tree Farm. I spent three months here with Justin doing the training and doing the internship with him. And because of that, I have my farm today. So I would absolutely recommend doing this type of training and basically learning the style of farming because I, I truly believe this this method of farming is going to be the future. It's going to take off like crazy. I reckon a lot of people are understanding that and they're more than happy to support us. 
So I do veg box deliveries, local veg box deliveries. Anyone in the Southern Highlands uh, can jump on my website and, and order veg boxes. So I do a monthly subscription and then every Tuesday, Nick, my driver, he um, drops off everyone's veggies on a Tuesday. Uh, I also sell to local restaurants, the What If Society, they've been a huge support for me ever since I began. We basically started our businesses at the same time and every single week they always buy my produce, they love it. You know, they recommend it to everybody, so they've been huge for me. And then there's the Sydney restaurants. So I've got lots of Sydney restaurants jumping on board. Huge motivation for me, and you know, I'm honoured to have my food in there. So there's lots of reasons why people would want to buy uh, this kind of produce. It's grown chemical free, so there's no, no chemicals at all. There's very low input, so I don't use fertilisers, petroleum-based fertilisers, anything like that. Nutrient density in the food that we're eating. Um, what we see around here, diversity with the plants, it's really important, plants and um, the fauna and flora. Diversity is really important. So what we're doing is producing nutrient-dense food that, um, you know, in turn, makes us healthy and you know, ultimately that's what we want. We want to be healthy people and the Highlands has a lot of potential. Uh, we could grow most of our own food right here and small scale farmers like me have the ability to, to do that. So buying local supports me to keep growing. It's also going to build the local economy. Um, you know, we'll provide agro-tourism. It's going to be an attraction for, for people from Sydney and Canberra and the Illawarra to come up here and, and see what the Highlands has to offer. So, it's, it's, really, it's really about health and um, local business. For me, I think it's the people. Uh, you meet people who are dedicated to this concept of, of sustainability, but also they're also different. Uh, in their own right and they all have different information to share because this information sharing is a big part of it as well. So I've learned a lot um, from other people. I've learned to be patient <laughs> and that's a good thing. You can't hurry Mother Nature. She'll take as long as she needs to grow her food etc and she'll provide all the weather conditions to get in the way. Well we think is getting in the way but perhaps we don't just understand that she knows best and uh, you know it'll all be fine in the end. Uh, my name's Jill Cochran. I'm the coordinator at Mossvale Community Garden. We are in uh, Railway Street, Mossvale, and we're situated, we're in a park, so it's Corlett Park in Mossvale, and we're between the public tennis courts and what used to be the old bowling club, which is now Connect Christian Church. Uh, so we got the little bit in the middle, which was actually a car park, so under here, we actually have bitumen. So we've raised all our beds because we had no soil. The community garden here started in 2004. The uh, origins of this garden, which was as a social project for isolated men in the community. There was a high suicide rate in the area back then. So Anglicare uh, community workers started to set this garden up and did the early groundwork. And so men would come here a morning a week and have a cup of tea and maybe garden together. In 2007, when I found out about the community garden, because I just loved the concept, came and volunteered here. And then when the coordinator had to leave, uh, she asked if I would take over. So you need to know when's a good time to plant something. If it'll, it'll only thrive if you plant it in the season it wants to grow. Prior to coming here, I was part of the Permaculture Southern Highlands group. Um, I've uh, studied permaculture over the years with David Holmgren, who was one of the co-founders of the concept of permaculture. And so it actually has really engulfed my whole life, you know, because it just made so much sense to me. So, um, so that's what I, what I brought to the garden are all these sustainability principles. Uh, well, the ethos is care for the earth, care for its people, and a fair share for everyone. And they're very simple things which you can apply to everything you do in your life from growing food to using uh, renewable energies, all these kinds of things. The word sustainable for me means that you're not changing things so much that you can't keep doing it, some sort of process that you're using. That sustainability to me is we can continue to do a process forever without leaving damage behind us. It's about thinking about how can we do whatever we do in the least damaging and most productive way uh, within a community setting. So we're bringing people with us. 
the aim was to set this place up as a demonstration site for how we can live more simply in the environment as a human community and um, just in the community getting people inspired to grow food in their own backyard and have a few cooks and um, do the, the general principles of permaculture from home. So you've started with our pride and joy which is our, our straw bale shelter which is at the hearth for our, our group and then um, we've got a pizza oven that was built by the community too as they like the community came in paid $50 and learnt, over four weekends learned how to build that. Uh, we've got a hot house with lots of baby things and things that need protecting from particularly cold uh, days. Uh, we've got our solar panels which are down on our little cottage down the front. We've had lots of um, pizza days, not enough in everybody's uh, opinion I'm sure. Because it's uh, the size of it, it's the sort of thing that takes a while to build up so that you get the heat to the right level. And the trick is that you uh, start with pizzas because that's when it's really hot and it's formed all the coals and then it slowly it holds that heat but it doesn't keep getting hotter. So then you can put your roasts in and then the last thing would probably be maybe cakes and things like that. So you can really do a whole meal um, and a whole celebration out of it. The community garden here is um, connected with uh, a group called Regen Action Winter Caribbee, which is really keen to see regenerative gardening and farming practices happening right from urban, from our backyard, right through to getting more um, veggie farms in the, on the perimeter of our towns. What that will do will be the capture of carbon back down from the atmosphere. With the help of Regen Action, we've actually started a group, a community garden network. So it's a Southern Highlands community garden network. Because we haven't got many community gardens in the area, we thought it would be a nice idea to try and work out a way that we could make it easier because there's always those first constraints of where do I start? How do I do this? What do I have to get go to council for and that sort of thing. So we have actually formed a community garden network so that those community gardens already set up who know the process can actually help um, the new ones hoping to form um, to make their life easier so they can set up more easily. And then we can have celebrations and we can share our little teaching workshops and things that we do here. Our wages for the day are whatever's in season, we can take some home. But I think we prefer that that goes to groups like Oz Harvest, etc., and the charities that can actually get it out to people who are really in need. We can't supply the whole of our society here with, with organic food. Um, we're more of a demonstration site for what we can grow in the, each season. We actually were um, instrumental in starting the little Thursday afternoon market next door the Railway Street Farmers Market. We actually uh, are looking for more workers now because as this grows, it requires more work. And so we're looking for, you don't have to be a gardener. We can, you know, we, you can pick that up because we work, usually work in pairs or together um, with, in groups uh, so that you can pick up how we actually do things here. Uh, so just come along and um, have a good pair of boots and a hat and sunscreen and a water bottle. But yeah, no, just come in and we'll give you a tour and we'll um, so get you started working with someone and um, hopefully you'll enjoy it. When we're here on Monday and Thursday, people can come in just to have a look if they like. There's no commitment. Uh, yeah, just come down and, and have a look and say hello and meet the the mouldy old crew that we've got here. <laughs> It'll be lovely to see you.